Cheers everyone. So I want to take a couple of moments uh, on the channel to talk about WandaVision episode 5. Um, I've been really loving WandaVision. To no surprise of anybody, I'm a big MCU fan. Um, it was always going to work for me. Um, I tend to absorb and take in everything the MCU does. Uh, so WandaVision, you know, the fact that I love it was no surprise to anybody. And I just want to actually, you know, take a moment to talk about the big shock at the end of episode 5. Um, so anyone who uh, hasn't seen the end of episode 5 yet, please um, beg you... Turn the video off, go and watch it, come back later. Um, because in five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, I'm now going to start talking about spoilers. Now, it's been hinted at through the initial four episodes, five episodes of WandaVision, that we're going to see um, Wanda's brother, Pietro, who was played in the MCU uh, movies... Winter Soldier and um, Age of Ultron by Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, and it's not been subtle with the hints in WandaVision that at some point he was going to turn up. And, you know, WandaVision is clearly set within her own reality. She's, you know, brought in the, the corpse. What we understand the corpse of Vision is in essentially sort of weirdly reanimated it she's using the townspeople to play parts in her sitcom so the the character of pietro was always going to be um interesting because you would assume the body of pietro is long gone let's say in whatever capacity it's a long time ago and so at some point if she was going to bring him back Whichever way it was going to happen, it was probably going to look in some form like Aaron Taylor Johnson. So the big shock at the end of episode 5 is that Quicksilver, Pietro, does actually turn up. But it's not Aaron Taylor Johnson, it's Evan Peters from the MCU. Uh, sorry, from the X-Men, the Fox Cinematic Universe, or whatever you wanted to call that. I don't think they gave it a name, because it wasn't really a thing, it was just the fox man it was the fox's x men and this is this is really it could just be an exceedingly cute cameo and in a few weeks we will look back upon this and think oh god you see how we were all just taken in by that so at the very least it could just be a really really cute cameo and very clever by the writers to use evan peters who everybody knows as this version of quicksilver and it's so quirky and it's and it's very commendable. But I have started to see, as I've browsed Twitter and the social medias tonight, I've started to see um, people thinking this is how uh, Marvel Studios are going to weave in the X-Men, as we know it, into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that both fills me with excitement and it fills me with dread. Because throughout the, the years of Fox's X Men. There's been a lot to love. I I genuinely believe there has been a lot to love, and I and I still maintain as much as everybody knows I love the MCU and I wax lyrical about how much I think it's fantastic and it's been a a milestone in cinema and it's been this most amazing thing. I do think at times Fox's X Men has been emotionally more resonant, and I think it's been at times better. I think the highs of things like Days of Future Past and X2 are in many ways, barring certain events like, you know, Endgame and the events that they depicted, I think things like X2 and Days of Future Past, I think of, and, and Logan, of course, let's never, never forget Logan. I think those moments within those Fox, you know, 20th century Fox movies have actually been emotionally more resonant and from a filmmaking point of view, actually better, you know have been achievements even if they've not necessarily been authentic to the source and this is really what we're going at because for the most part in our marvel studios have done you know certain deviations from its source material but for the most part it's very faithful um you know even things like civil war which are nothing like how the comics depicted that event 
but there's been imagery, certain events, certain lines, certain things they adapt and twist and, and, and weave it into the to the movie's narrative and make it work. And Fox did a, you know, a really good job with that themselves, even if it's a lot more unclear. Uh, you know, Days of Future Past takes the very basic template of the comic book, but it still manages to make a really great movie that's emotionally uh, engaging and, and 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 exceptional. And so, one of my dreams was as as the as Disney bought out Fox. One of my dreams was, but also one of the biggest difficulties was how are they going to bring about their version of the X Men? Because the problem with the X Men is you can't just like the Fantastic Four. Just to just to divert briefly, if you wanted to bring the the Fantastic Four into the MCU, you simply have four characters, um, you know, plus uh, Doom. And you create an environment or a, a, a problem, and then you know the, the, that problem, that cataclysm leads to the Fantastic Four and the MCU. It's very simple, and I think that's generally what they're going to do. You know, it's not going to be long before the Fantastic Four are in the MCU. The problem with the X Men is they're very much rooted in human history. You really do need like Magneto to have lived during the like the events of World War Two, and I know like World War Two is an exceptionally long time ago now um, and it seems almost unfeasible to have a 90 year old Magneto running around but the, the point still stands you know these characters are rooted in our you know our history that it it's a lot more difficult to say they've always been in the MCU they just haven't been seen up until now I don't think that would wash with people and I think Kevin Feige is too clever to to understand that you know, I think he's, he's too clever to and understands that too. I don't. I don't think he's going to try and pull that kind of trick. I don't think, like in you know, in the next few movies, we're just going to start having mutants randomly turn up, and then there's a big retcon where they're, oh, they've always been there, and here's the events of the Battle of New York where mutants were there. We're not going to do that. I think he's too respectful to the material to do that. So I've always sort of surmised that they will. They will do the X Men as a separate entity, or they will use a multiverse thing to kind of do that. And one of my biggest dreams was Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. God bless them; they played the characters so fantastically. But they are a bit too old now to play the characters in a new iteration. So my biggest dream was having James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender reprise their roles in a new canon or new continuity. Um. Obviously, this hasn't been announced. Marvel have been very uh, close guarded with what they want to do with the X-Men. They've not talked about it. But what we're starting to see over the last couple of years is... Not necessarily, even necessarily last couple of years, last year. When when Spider-Man Far From Home dropped, there was a very exciting moment in the post credit scene where we got J.K. Simmons's Jonah Jameson. It was a new Jonah Jameson. It wasn't the Jonah Jameson from the Raimi movies, but it was J.K. Simmons playing the character again. And as someone who puts that down as one of my top three castings ever of um, comic book characters, J.K. Simmons as um, uh, Jonah Jameson was just fantastic. And to see him again within the MCU playing that same character, albeit different, was a real buzz. And so that gave me hope originally that one day we may get James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, re, you know, as recast in those roles, but in a new kind of continuity. So bringing Evan Peters into One Division, going back to the point of the video, bringing back Evan Peters as the role of Pietro, it fills me with a real sense of excitement that you know this may now be a reality. We may now see this. It shows that you know Marvel Studios are aware and want to willingly embrace aspects of what Fox did, even if it's just for a tongue-in-cheek joke, which I genuinely believe that's all this potentially is. It's maybe just a very, very cute stinger at the end of an episode, and then she'll do a reality flip and we'll get Aaron Taylor-Johnson next week. It could just be that, a nice little stinger. But if it's more, as some fans are theorising that it's going to be more... And this is going to be some sort of reality folding thing where we're now going to get Fox's X-Men bleed into the MCU 
I'm excited because it might mean I get my wish, I get my James McAvoy, and I get my Michael Fassbender. But it also fills me with dread. Because since the Disney buyout, the thing I've been the most looking forward to, the thing I've been going to work, telling people, the thing I've been telling me amongst my friends is, if all you know of the X-Men is the Fox X-Men movies, then as great as they have been occasionally, and as fantastic as Hugh Jackman is in those roles and, and things like that, you've still got so much more to see. You know, if you know the comics, the 92 cartoon show, if you knew the capacity of some of these characters, you know, some of these people haven't even met the proper Scott Summers. They've never met the proper Rogue. These are the things that you have got to look forward to if all you know of the MCU is the, the Fox movies. And this is what worries me, is if... And obviously, you know, thinking about it as well, it's just literally popped in my head as I'm recording this. Is like, you know, of course, Deadpool three is confirmed to be an MCU movie coming soon. It's going to be Marvel's, you know, what's regarded to be the MCU's first R-rated movie. And that's kind of cool. You can do that with Deadpool because Deadpool is a fourth wall breaking character. So he can he can literally walk into the MCU in his third film and it be his first film in the MCU. And it doesn't matter if he's, re- you know referencing Fox movies because he breaks reality anyway you know that kind of works if the MCU are basically just going to say the easiest way to get the Fox movies in to our you know the X-Men into our universe is that Wanda does a reality bending thing and then oh here's the X-Men as you remembered them obviously I don't think Hugh Jackman will come back I genuinely don't think he will even though even if you paid him such an exceptional amount of money I don't think Hugh Jackman will come back because he was very, very clear he was done with that role. But where do you leave the other characters? And the worst thing I would want to see them do is... And this is no disrespect to the cast that are in the uh, you know X-Men Dark Phoenix or Apocalypse or, or whatever. But I, outside of Fassbender and McAvoy reprising the role in a new version of that character. Because they just played it so well and I want to see more of that. I don't want to see the same characters come back in the MCU. I, I don't want to see the same Gene. I don't want to see the same Scott. It's time for a fresh, more authentic reboot of these characters. Because I genuinely believe that if if, if audiences of today, cinema goers of today, could see the Scott Summers that I know from the comics and the 92 cartoons and the Rogue, the best Rogue that you will ever see in your life... No disrespect to Anna Paquin. She did what as much as she could with the character that as was written to her. But that's not Rogue. And anyone who knows X-Men knows that's not Rogue. And I'm not being a gatekeeper or anything like that. Because I'm not gatekeeping the character. Because I want you all to love the character like I do. Um, you know. And I, and I, and the, the, my biggest fear would be that like... At the end of one division, they basically say, "Yeah, here's all the here's all the Fox X Men characters," and I just think we're still stuck with these versions of the character, which are so so unauthentic to to what they deserve to be. You know, a Scott Summers done right could be what Chris Evans was to the cap- character of Captain America, where they took a very a very sort of I don't I don't want to say dull character in the comic books but a very I don't even want to say bland it's hard to sort of um articulate what I'm trying to say but a not as interesting character as he could be and Chris Evans took that and through the writers and and the direction they took the character made him into such an earnest wonderful character and the character has always been earnest but Chris brought something to that role which I think audiences could uh, empathize with and get into a lot and uh, and that's the kind of thing you could have from Scott. You know, my dream for a character like Rogue is that, you know, you see the Rogue that's pained and complex and troubled, but at the same time, you know, magnificently strong and, you know, at times, you know, the trump card in the X-Men, you know, there's times where Rogue has been instrumental into dealing with whatever ever problem they've been dealing with because of the strength 
and the resolve that that character can bring and the great juxtaposition to that character is that she's so broken and emotionally damaged through her, her history and none of that was portrayed in the Fox universe and if they're just going to take the quick and easy card of bringing the Fox universe in then I just worry that we're going to lose the potential of that again for another however many years and uh, this is turning into a bit of a ramble so I'm going to draw it to a close but that's basically my fear is the fact that they're you know they're going to embrace the the, the the Fox X-Men universe in ways that I don't want them to but then I'm selfish that I want to see Fassbender and McAvoy again and that's my sort of that's my that's my difficulty you know so uh, I hope this has been an interesting insight into the uh, dilemma that one division episode five has brought i love the episode and the ending made literally it blew my mind apart because i just thought what are the possibilities where are they going to go for this and i and i and i came away with a genuine sort of ecstasy of like this is absolutely amazing i you know hammered the keyboard like what what's this going to mean to the people i know and then as i sat and thought about it i thought no what if the next person walks into that room is anna, anna paquin's rogue and i just think no, 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 nothing against that that version of Rogue, but it's not the Rogue that the world deserves to know. You know, it 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 was fine for the story they were trying to tell, but it's it's time for the genuine X Men that I know, um, and I want you all to love it too. That's the thing. If if all you know of the X Men is the Fox movies, then believe me, as good as they have been at times. There's an entire world of possibility that you are you are literally open to seeing, and it makes me excited that you can see it too, because yeah, they're the best. You know, I've been saying for a lot of time, a long time now. If you think you know Endgame is as good as it gets, you just wait till some of the X Men stories come along, authentically told as they were in the comics or the ninety two cartoon, which got it so right so many times. Um. Because they pull your heartstrings in in ways you probably you know can't expect the comic book thing to do. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. What a ramble! It's been fun to do. I haven't done a video uh, to to my you know YouTube viewers for a long time. Um, so yeah, cool. Hope you're all having a, a decent Friday. I've interrupted my usual Friday shenanigans to record this because the One Division ending it just blew my mind, and I just needed to get I needed to get my thoughts somewhere and that somewhere has been here so this has been a bit of my, a bit of an outlet outlet tonight which is why it's literally just being recorded right now as i'm drinking some stellas and i'm going to upload it to youtube immediately i'm not going to edit it i'm not going to look back on it i'm just going to literally upload it um because i just think it's important sometimes to just literally have a brain bleed <laughs> Uh, to uh, you guys so thanks very much for watching have a great weekend wear a mask and i'll see you soon cheers